Have you ever been asked this question, what do you want to be when you grow up? This is a dreadful question for a seven-year-old, especially one like myself, who was extremely quiet and introverted as a child. When you hear questions like, what do you want to be when you grow up? When you're a kid, you're automatically thinking about a princess, right? or a ballerina, or a basketball player, an astronaut. All these things are great things when you're a kid, but not for seven-year-old Nicole. For me, this was a dreadful question. I did not want to stand in front of this classroom and say what I wanted to be when I grew up because I had no idea. I could actually fit into any one of these categories. I could be any one of those things. How was I supposed to choose one? And so, I looked at my teacher, I looked at my classmates, and I said, I want to be the best. <laughs> that was my answer. I might as well not have answered at all. But I was a quiet child, quiet as a little princess. The conflict was I also loved climbing trees. I loved digging for worms. I loved making things, building things, and solving puzzles. So there was no way that I was just going to be able to choose just one. Years later, I go to my, my parents and I, say, and I say, I am joining the Marine Corps Reserves. My dad's like, wait. What? <laughs> Have you thought of any other branch of service, right? Anything else? <laughs> to his point, my dad is an Army vet. And Statista notes that at that time, black women made up 40% of the thin 30% of black people enlisted in the Army. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, <laughs> how I saw myself was not as an Army soldier. I saw myself as something else. As a matter of fact, once I learned about what a Marine is and what they're all about, their reputation is flawless. They are disciplined. They're always ready. They're always the best. And they're always trained with such diligence that they are a fearless force known internationally across every single continent. Me being a part of that it did something amazing to me. There was no way that if I was going to join the service that I was just going to be typecasted into something else. So I realized, however, that 95% 95, 95 of Marines actually look like this guy. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> but I said, oh, OK, you know what? That's fine. I've decided that I'm going to do this. And so I did. I, in fact, became one of the few and the proud, the Marines. One of not only the 5% of the even fewer and prouder Ura women Marines, I feel so much pride knowing that I chose to do this and took that step that I cannot even begin to tell you how amazing that makes me feel every day. Being a Marine and mostly uh, being deployed overseas it taught me so many things. One thing that it taught me the most of is that I have the capability to do more than the options that are put in front of me. It is possible that I can go beyond even the things that I think I could do or the things that I don't think I can do at all if I just decide that I'm going to do it. A lot of times, we look at the stereotype of situations, and we wonder and we're concerned, can I do that? Is that for me? Do I fit in there? How am I going to do this? And then the stigma, as you go older and you understand the process of events, you realize that there are embodied stereotypes across all types of categories. There's a stereotype on age. There's a stereotype on gender. There's a stereotype on size, culture, color, class. These stereotypes are things that we use so that we can make an understanding of how things, are, how things are or how we think that things should be. These stereotypes allow us or cause us to question who we really are and who we can actually be. I believe that if we use technology 
to position ourselves, we may be able to debunk at least some of these stereotypes. Some of these stereotypes. If we take size, for example, I am a short person. <laughs> With my short legs and my somewhat petite stature, I'm always, always at the bottom of the line. Short people are usually chosen last when it comes to a basketball game. <laughs> However, despite this, I graduated top 10% of my Marine Corps class. If the military at that time had the tools and the information to understand my physical capabilities, perhaps they could have developed specific training models to enhance the physical fitness training and testing that they do for Marines, for Army soldiers, for Rangers today. Perhaps if they had this information, they could do more. Better yet, if I had that information, maybe I would have positioned myself to try even harder right, and to meet even higher goals and achieve things that I didn't think I could do. Having that data, I could have been the next G.I. Jane. <laughs> well, despite that, at least I wouldn't have thought that I couldn't do it. At least I wouldn't have been worried about a stereotype because of my size or my gender. At least I would have been empowered with that knowledge and understanding to at least try. I believe that if we use technology today, we can make better informed decisions about the way we move. I am a part of a company that uses machine learning and bioscience, and bio, and bio, <laughs> and biomechanical science to understand movement and to allow people to have informed decisions about the things that they do. So what's machine learning, right? What is this concept? What is biomechanics? Machine learning is a host of algorithms that are collectively trained over a period of time using pattern recognition. The pattern recognition is then calculated, it is then used to calculate an ultimate predicted goal. Biomechanics, on the other hand, is the process of human movement science where one is studied internally. So the patterns of movements across your muscles, your joints and your ligaments are analyzed. Those patterns are studied to understand how we move and stand and balance throughout every given day. I believe that if we had the tools and made better decisions about the things that we do, we could actually accomplish more. Using science and technology will, be, will allow us to be better equipped to accomplish our individual goals and our individual as, um, expectations for our lives. We can use machine learning and biomechanic technology to position ourselves against stereotypes that we, have, that we may have even put on ourselves. Despite my experiences and, um, despite my experiences and the things that I've learned over time, I realize that it's difficult to position yourself against a stereotype. I realize that it's something that you have to go against when you think to yourself, can I do that? Or better yet, someone looks at you and they say, why are you doing that? Or why would you want to do that? It's disheartening to take that stance. But I believe if we use the science that we already have and we use it to make better informed decisions about our life, we'll be able to position ourselves in a way where no one will be able to tell us what we can't do we will have evidence and justification of what we're going to do, backed by science and technology. Sometimes when we think about a stereotype, or we think about something, and then we meet someone or some situation happens, and it goes against the stereotype that we've already developed, it kind of messes us up and we think that that person is actually an exception to the rule. But that's not necessarily the case. What if we didn't think that every tall person in the room, if they were playing basketball, should be a center? What if we actually tested every person in the room and saw that some shorter people actually had more power, more agility, and more jump height than the tallest person in the room? Would that decision make you feel like that tall person shouldn't be center? What if? We think about football. Most bigger people in football are linemen, right? 
because they're bigger people. But not all big people have the endurance that it may take to really dominate that position. Short people, well, they don't play. But you can say that to Muncie Bowles and you would probably think differently. I believe that if we continue to accept where we are now, we will never position ourselves to become what we could be in the future. I believe that if we stay inside of a circle or a bubble that makes us feel comfortable, where everyone around us looks the same, nothing is ever going to change. At least one of those stereotypes can be debunked using science and technology. At least one of those stereotypes can be eliminated if we take a stand for ourselves and push our own limits based on the data insight that we have about ourselves and our own personal capabilities. Imagine the possibilities if we were able to deliberately position ourselves against stereotypes that are put in front of us. Imagine the possibilities if we had insights on our own internal capabilities. Age wouldn't matter. When you look at an older person, you think, oh, I got them. They're not going to move that fast. But if that older person understands their capabilities, they can push themselves, and they can win, and they can go to the next level, and they can dominate. What if we were able to position ourselves against a stereotype using technology? Thank you.